Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to make this, still don't know what I'm going to call this, obviously it'll be in the title of this video by the time you see it, but at this point I am still unsure. But basically you have a 6x6 front here and then you open it up and you have this, it's a concertina, it's a multi-step, it's accordion, it's got a bit of everything in it and you can actually add this section inside a card when you open it. Um, either as a top fold or a side fold and I'll talk through that through this tutorial but this is how I put this one together and this is how I made this from a Facebook live that I did so you can see there's a real nice what I would call a showstopper card and then on the back here you have your space to be able to write your message and I've got these gorgeous little butterflies can you see they're kind of just like almost like flying I'm just going to pop that one back there there we go kind of just like almost flapping where they catch the uh, the light there so I've used the butterfly kisses from Dovecraft to make this card uh, it's very easy to do don't be worried with all these different kind of layers there's actually only a few cut lines that you make the rest are just folds so let me show you how to make it so first of all I'm going to talk you through this template I would suggest maybe making a template first I think templates are great because it helps you have more of an understanding of how the cards are all going to work so to make this template just get yourself a piece of maybe a scrap piece of 12 by 6 cardstock or you know a colour that you maybe aren't too fond of. I'm going to go straight in and make mine but I'm going to talk you through like I said make yours as your as your template first so that you have something that looks like mine. So first of all you want to cut yourself your piece of 12 by 6 cardstock and we're going to do our score line so or you'll be marking with a pencil and just drawing these as pencil lines. The black lines will be your score lines, the red lines are your cut lines. If you just want to go straight in and make the card like I'm doing, you can do that as well. So first of all, you want to score at one and three quarters, at two and a half, at three and a half, at four and seven eighths and six which will be your half way marker. Now if you wanted to you could just flip the card and repeat those same score lines that I've given you. If you are using 11 length card or a four length card that is what I would suggest you do. So you will start off with your middle point. So if it's 11 inches long then you will score at five and a half and then do those four score lines that I just mentioned. So the one and three quarter, the two and a half, the three and a half, and the four and seven eighths. And then you would have your five and a half marker. You'd then flip your card and do the same score lines again. What it will just mean is that you will have a smaller area here. Yours will be thinner. Same as it's 11 and three quarters, the halfway point would be five and seven eighths. So do your five and seven eighths score line and then just do those first score lines again. And in fact, anything I do on each half, you would do on each half of those sizes that you have. All it will mean is your middle score line will be slightly different. Therefore, your middle sections will be smaller. Hopefully that's um, helped anybody that maybe doesn't have 12 inch length. Like I said, I've got the 12 here, so I'm going to continue now. And you then want to score at 7 and 1 eighth. Then at 8 and a half. Then 9 and a half. And then 10 and a quarter. Next, what we want to do is pop the cardstock like so. And you're going to fold over your 1 and 3 quarter score line like so. So you will have that half. So I'm going to do it with this one. So I'm folding over that first score line. I'm just going to burnish. I'm just going to keep that down like so. So what you're going to do is you're going to come in one and a half inches and then you're just going to score down to that first score line which will be three quarters of the way. So you see I'm just joining this score line here. I'm then going to score again at four and a half which is one and a half in from this side. Again, just down to that first score line. So this is what we've done. I'm then going to flip it around, fold over that same section and just do the same again. So at one and a half, just come down and at four and a half, like so. And then you're going to cut that. So you're going to cut down each of those lines 
and again at this end. Nice and neat because this is all going to be on display. You can see that I've just cut that. So now when I open it up, you'll have these sections. What you then want to do, I open up this one, is we now need to make a score line between these two cut lines here. So if you see at the end here, we need to put a score line now to connect this so it can fold out. So I'm just going to lay it back in here and you just want to hover your stylus kind of up to that cut and it'll be at the one inch marker and then you'll find your track and just join that up. And again, just flip it around, find that one inch track and join those up. So now you'll see I've added that score line and that's going to make it much easier for us to be able to pop that out in a moment. Next we want to now create these cut lines. So you're going to fold over your three and a half score line. So you have all of that now on the back. So the best way to just double check is lay it in the scoreboard like this. I can see where my three and a half score line is. So that's the one that I want to fold over. And now this one here, you're going to come in one inch and you're going to come down one inch, but you won't have a score line to meet. You need to just kind of eyeball it like I said if you're making your you know your template first then you can mark that all in but I can see my one inch here and I'm just going to bring my stylus down and score down to one inch here now if you don't have any markers on the side just grab your ruler and pop it in here and then I can see the one inch and I'm just going to score down like so and again I'm going to score one inch in so it'll be at five inches down one inch and then again, I'm going to fold over that three and a half score line. Just burnish. And again, come down one. And again, come down one. Open up. And then that you'll see again. So there's the score lines that we've just created here. So you can see it joins this score line here, so that's fine. But you'll see here there won't be a score line connecting these two, just like when we've done this section. So we need to, again, join up those score lines. And the track that you'll be following will be the four and a half. So again, hover your stylus and then just find that track and join them up. And again, four and a half just join that up. Okay, fold it back in half and we need to cut those. So you can either cut them first and then join up the score line or um, do it after. And again, just very neatly. And again, just fold that one over and just cut down like so. And we'll open it up and that is the same now as what you've got on here. So if you've done this on, like I said, some scrap paper first, what you could now do is go over all of these score lines in black like I have. You could, you know, put all the score lines there and then pop some red marker for the cut lines. And then you've got that there, you know, to use for future cards. Next, what we want to do is some folding. So we'll start at the end here. So you want to pop this out so that this score line here is a valley. Okay. And as you pull that out, this score line here will become a valley, naturally, because that's just the way it wants to go. And you'll see now already, we've got that first corner of our card. You then want to pop this out, so these will naturally become now mountains. And this is going to come out, these will become valleys. Okay, so you can see now we've got the two coming out there. And then this long score line here needs to be a mountain. Basically, if you make sure your centre score line, so whether it's your five and a half, your five and seven eighths, or your six, make sure that's a valley. You can burnish all these in a minute, and then that one next to it, either side, will become a mountain. Oh, and you don't want to rip your card like I've just done there. <laughs> So I'm just going to 
by the time I put the pattern paper on that it should be okay okay but if I just fold that now all flat you can go in and just burnish you do it from this side you can get into those ones just burnish all of those score lines I'm going to hold this up so you can freeze you know pause the video but that is what you want to have on one side of your card and that's that centre six inch score line okay so both of these pieces will pop out okay so I kind of keep it like that then you want to do the same so I'm going to I am going to go through it all again on this side so pull this piece out first so that you create this score line as a valley fold and then just kind of bring that up okay and then again pop out this one and all the rest will kind of just you know go where they they need to go I'm just going to pinch those there okay my middle one is already the valley so this one here is going to become my mountain and again I'm just going to fold all that down and then you should be able to fold it all up like so now when I open it you'll see you've got that really cool shape now the next part I want to show you two ways of putting this together so with your scoreboard, if you get yourself another piece of 12 by 6, or it would be 11 by 5 and a half, or it would be 11 and 3 quarters, which is the A4 length by 5 and 7 eighths of an inch. What you're going to do first of all here, now if you want to do it the way I showed you at the beginning, then you will just want to cut yourself two pieces of 6 by 6, or two pieces of 5 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths, or two pieces of 5 and a half by 5 and a half. Okay, I'm trying to give you the three styles here and that we're, we're basically going to add these pieces on to this piece. But you might also want to add it inside a card. So going back to what I just said before, whether you're going to have those three sizes, just mark your halfway point, just, just dependent on what you have. Fold it in half. So I've just now got a 6x6 six six card blank. And what you can now do is you can add glue all around this end here and all around this end here and you can stick this into your card and it will give you a pop out like so and you can have this as a top fold or as a side fold so you can decorate all this with the same size of mats and layers that I'm going to give you in a moment but I just wanted to show you that you can create you know two kind of very different cards here but the one I want to show you today is this longer kind of showstopper so although I have scored that I'm now actually going to cut this in half so I have my two pieces of they're just going to be under six by six because I'm going to remove the score line but um, yeah just make sure you have the squares to match the size of the the card that you're doing next I'm going to stick this onto here but you need to make sure that when you lay this down you see you get these pieces hanging out so although you have that section we need to make sure that these are concealed so when we stick this in we're only going to add the glue onto the very end section we need to bring it in just slightly so I'm just going to run some of my liquid glue there I get so many questions about the glue I use this is the Kalau multi-purpose clear solvent based glue in a beacon three in one bottle and the beacon three in one is the same kind of solvent based glue which is I think easier for people stateside um, and also like in places like Australia and stuff you can get that I think easier I use this because it is like a cement so it's really good for card making because it just makes them so strong and it keeps them straight it doesn't walk the card because there's no water so now I've added that there onto that side I'm going to fold it all flat and I'm going to pop it on here, making sure that these bits that hang out run flush with the card. Like so. So now when we open up the card, this is one side. Now if you've got anything overhanging, which I've got a little bit there, I'm just going to snip. Use my bigger scissors here. I'm just going to snip that off because I actually think the cardstock was cut a little bit crooked. There we go. Then you want to do the same on the opposite side. So I'm going to glue again pop it on that section and then you're going to lay this all flat and just sit this over the top so it lines up with the piece on the bottom 
for there is your card now all ready to decorate. So that's how it will go into a box envelope and then open up like so and then you will pop your message on the back. So all the mats and layers, so I have used the Butterfly Kisses which I am literally down to a few pages so I'll definitely get, be getting another one. And then there's the decoupage kit because I'm thinking with this one, I've just taken the butterflies off because I need to um, re-stick those again. Rather than having the happy birthday, which I have already gone ahead and heat embossed, and it's lovely. <laughs> so I've done it in the silver, which is what I did say I may have done during the live. So I still may use it, but I, I want to play around. This is from my, it's one of my favourite stamp sets. This is the um, Sentiments A5 stamp set from my own collection. I'll link everything as always in the description box, but that's how it looks in the silver. It's really, really nice. So. I'm thinking of having that at the end and when I actually lay this over the top I think the silver does go better because it pulls out the silver that's in the decoupage. This purple I had was not quite the same purple. The purple in this collection is more of a pinky purple so yeah so I may go for that otherwise I may do a topper at each end. So I have one of the toppers here which is from the decoupage kit. I've got all these already made up now but I was thinking about having one at each side so you can see how lovely that looks as well. But first of all we're going to do these two sections here and you'll see they're like a C shape so I've done them all as one if you would rather have a separate piece here and here and then a strip you can do that what you want to do is cut yourself two pieces that are five and three quarters by one and a half and just mark with a pencil one and a quarter in from each side so just there Okay, and then come in three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to, it's quite easy for me to line up on this grid paper, but I'm just going to draw a line um, coming in three quarters of an inch, like so. And then I'm just going to join up that pencil line, and you're going to remove all of this. Okay, like so. I'm then going to sit it over the top of this one because it's only a thin paper, and I'm going to cut them at the same time. So I'm just going to Cut down each side there. Now if you have a directional paper I would make sure you pop one that way so the sides are touching and the patterns on the outside because that way you'll get your shape the right way. This is non-directional so I don't need to worry. So just make sure, just bear that in mind before you cut into it. And then I'm just going to cut up here. Okay so now I have those two pieces which you'll see will fit in there perfectly. So I'm going to get them stuck down. Okay next I've got these two strips which are going to go in the middle sections here. So because that was one and seven eighths wide this is a slightly, yeah this is seven eighths wide by uh, five and three quarters. So I'm going to stick those two in the middle. Next I've got these four pieces which are going to go on these two sections here and these measure three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters. So I'm going to stick one there, one there, one there and one there. Then I've got these four pieces which are going to go on these sides here. And these measure half an inch by two and three quarters. Then I've got these four pieces which are going to go on these four sides here and these measure one and one eighth by three quarters of an inch. I've got these four pieces here and these measure three quarters of an inch squared and they're going to go in these ones here. We then need four pieces that are half an inch by one and a quarter and they're going to go on these little kind of side pieces or corners. So I'll get those down.
and then I also cut myself two very small strips to go in this section here which is optional it does look nice without but I did want to fill this and these are one eighth of an inch by three and three quarters So lots of little pieces but it's a great one for using up your scraps so I've got you know these are my scraps from this collection I just kept them all in this bag so that's all I've used to do all of this which has been great then for the sides so you'll want two pieces of three and three quarters by five and three quarters so now I can lay this down here and I can really see how that's going to look actually I do really like the silver so I think I will keep that one but also you know you've got your pattern paper either side and then you know one of these toppers how lovely does that look as well although I do really like it <laughs> I'm terrible when it comes to decoration but I'm just going to pop that one and then I think I'm going to have the just for you once I get my pattern paper there as well we'll see you'll see at the end if I change my mind again you'll also want to cut yourself a piece of five and three quarters square and you can use that to decorate the front and then I'm going to pop the especially for you on the front again the same as I've done on the other one because I just think that sentiment works really well so yeah I'm going to get all that stuff down I've also cut this piece here which is four by four which you will stick once you've got your pattern paper here stick that on top and that's your space to be able to write your message and they still get to see some nice pattern paper as well Okay, so that's everything stuck down. I've got one of the butterflies there, which are from this set. Now, they come with the sticker, but I like to pull the top off and then you've got all those stickers to use, you know, in like planners and things like that or on other card making paper craft projects. So you almost get double, but I'm now out of the top one. So I'm going to order some more of these and I'll pop another one there when that arrives. Or just keep the one, you don't have to have two. And then you'll see here, I've got those gorgeous faceted glitter gems and they're here so I'm going to add just a few of those around this section here and then on the back I've used the puffy stickers which also come in the collection so you'll see this one says with love I'm hoping that mark's going to come away I might have to get creative with some embellishments there as well but for this one here I think I'm going to have best wishes because I've got especially for you happy birthday just for you <laughs> so let's have best wishes on the back of course you don't have to you can just have it blank and you know pop whatever you want there but I always like to go over the top so there's that one there so that is everything I'm just going to finish with these little gemstones and I'm out of the smaller ones but it still looks nice with those there just love the sparkle you get when they catch the light okay so there you have it I'll just bring it up so like I said I still don't know what to really call this one some kind of accordion multi-step card I think but I like that you can change it and stick it inside the card like I showed earlier on to give a completely different look and then it does all fold up really nicely there and the nice thing is as well that you can have things kind of you know stuck popping out of these because they have you see when it folds flat in that space you've got all this area so you can have things on acetate like maybe the butterfly you know on some wire so it really does look like it's popping out but I just think it looks really nice and it's very unexpected it's quite different for someone to receive that you know take it out of the box and already it's got the spring so they know it's just going to open up and uh, yeah it's a great one for any work colleagues as well because you've got lots of space to be able to you know add the signatures and so on so I'll bring that one in again as well so there you have it to showstopper cards really enjoyed these ones using the butterfly kisses collection as always i will link everything in the description box below and i'll be back very soon with more fun tutorials thanks for watching bye